Thank you very much. I want to stand uh, here to thank the center for inviting me. I, I saw this as homecoming because one going around, I remember I stayed in this place for one year as a student uh, of this institution. And uh, by the time I was here, this, there was no building here. So there are a lot of changes I have seen myself when I got in. The only thing I could remember, I saw my picture when I was looking very young in the Hall of Fame. Now I am so old that you can't compare the two and say, no, they're two different people. So thank you very much. And also for this, I have come to meet some of my friends and old friends and colleagues. And I hope this gives me an opportunity to also um, make new ones, effective and empowering leadership in the security sector is a very important issue. Next. Again, yes, thank you. We are welcome in Washington, but as Africans, I welcome you to uh, this place, and I am happy and I'm sure you are glad that we are here. Uh, but the question I ask, why not having this at home? Why are we not holding this conversation at home? Why must it be here? We are lucky that we have partners that want us to move together. We are lucky we have partners that want us to be effective leaders. But to be effective leaders, I will bring my conclusion before even the introduction, that for you to be an effective leader, you must empower your subordinates to grow, to replace you. If you can't do that, then you are not an effective leader. And I think that is part of our challenges in Africa, that God has given us a continent that have all the major resources in this world. I think we have the highest amount of diamond in the whole world. We can produce over 40% uh, of the hydroelectric in the world. And I think we, we have about 60 to 70% of world coffee and tea comes from Africa. So when the Americans are going for coffee break or the British are going for tea break, they should remember Africa. And that is why they have invited us here. But then what are we doing ourselves to all this? This is what I would want us to talk on a little bit um, next before we, uh, in, uh, as an introduction before we discuss that this is a continent so blessed. This is a continent that has virtually everything. But this is the continent that is the poorest in the world. What is wrong? And I think part of what is wrong is the issue of what uh, John Maxwell said, that everything starts and ends with leadership. If you get the leadership right, then everything, I think, would be uh, possible. So next, um, I wouldn't bore you. You can read that yourself. So I will not talk about it. I will, I will give you a pause to read. I want to emphasize the last one, opportunities and choices to fulfill his or her own potentials. I think that is one of our greatest problems. We have not given a lot of young people, as the discussion the last two speakers said, the young people are frustrated in Africa. How many of them have jobs? I can name a long list of well-read, well-educated Africans who, after all they have done, they have no job, they have nothing, and they, some of them are underemployed. Some of them have master's degree, they hide it and bring first living school certificate so that they can get a job. 
And if that person is going to be employed by a terrorist that will give him one million dollars, what do you think the temptation? He will go for it. And that is where we have these challenges. So next, well, you are either uniform people, and I've seen a lot of you with uniform that I used to wear, some of them similar to what I used to wear some years back. Uh, some of you are from the police, some are from the gendarmerie, some are from all, but you are crucial. And I say crucial because at one point in time in Africa, the military rule. They left with a bad or good legacy, they are there. We can't wish them away. But what do we do with them? Can we build, take the good part of it and throw away the bad part, whether it's the army, the air force, the navy, the police, next please, or whether from our judiciary, whether you are from the uh, uh, rule enforcement, or whether you are from the parliament, or whether you are in the city security, or whatsoever group that you are, you are very important. And it is important and cogent and crucial that all of us at your level understand the importance and the role that we can play to bring stability into our continent especially when we still have people in our continent who believe that being in government is a vehicle for them to make money, to rob people of their right, or if they can't get it, then they will terrorize the people. So with that, we also know that it's very crucial and it is the link of what you at the security sector do that really matters. Because if you deny somebody justice, then, and you send the wrong person to jail, or you send somebody for stealing a chicken, you send him to jail for 12 years, and for stealing $12 million, you send the person to jail for three weeks then something is wrong and you will see the repercussion and that is i think part of what we are doing if you are security uh, sector operators at every level especially at the strategic level do connive to pass laws or overlook at laws that will make the society move forward then you also become part of the problem. And, and what we see is that most of us don't have the courage. What we do now is to, instead of protecting the state and the people, we think more of our kinsmen, then we think more of the regime protection and not the people we are supposed to defend. Next. So that's now going to leadership. And there are many roles a leader play, and there are so many definitions of leadership. But a leader, some see a leader as a chief executive officer. Some see him as a coach. Some see him as teacher. Some as even our parents. We look at them as our leaders, our role models. And because we have even this debate going on, are leaders born or are they made? But that is not where we are. I want us to concentrate today. I want us to concentrate on you as a security sector official leader. What is your leadership? Uh, we have I just, there are several. I just have very few here, the definition of leadership. But I have always uh, said, the, the shortest form of leadership to me is take ability to influence. That is my shortest definition of leadership. Do you have the ability to influence? You are in an office. That office gives you power. 
That office gives you authority, but it cannot give you influence. You have to work for it. And that is why I like the English language, that you earn respect and you earn your salary. So if you do not work, you will not earn your salary. If you do not work hard on your leadership, you will not earn respect from your subordinate. So leadership is the ability to um, influence your environment and the people you lead. If you can't do that as a leader, then you have a big, big challenge. Next. As a leader, you have your followers. You have people who look up to you. You have people that you need to train. You have people who government have invested a lot of money to recruit and pay them salaries and allowances. What have you done in maybe them to perform the role that they are paid for? What are you doing in making sure that instead of coercion and instead of entrenching political issues that cannot develop the people, what are you doing in your position to advise? And that is the question uh, that somebody raised. And I want to say that it takes courage, I know, and I have been privileged, been lucky to be in that position. It takes courage. I, I was threatened at one time as chief of army staff of Nigeria that I was going to lose my job. And what I told the person, I said, I have lived in my office now for one year. And I have looked at the chronicles of those who have occupied that office. And somebody stayed in that office for four months. So if I leave after one year, I have, I have no the record holder. <laughs> but what I want to is what I learned as I was growing up in the service. What is your exit strategy when you enter any office? Not as you, as you aspire to go into an office. What is your strategy when you are leaving that office? A lot of us waste our time, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll remove that. No, ask yourself, what is your exit strategy? And I honestly thank God that I came to this institution because it helped me by the time I was leaving this place in, in the year 2000. And if a dumb like me, who spent one century to get a master's degree, because I got into here in 1999, and I left in 2000. That is one century. <laughs> if I spend one century just to get a master's degree, then you can understand why I am so grateful that it was a time well spent. Because as I was leaving this place, it was clear to me that as a leader at strategic level, you must build your subordinate to be able to see beyond the curve, even when they can't see it, but their mental picture, their experience will enable them to see beyond the curve of what is happening. And that is what strategic leadership is all about. So you must communicate with your, uh, your subordinates to understand you clearly what you want them to do. Another joke that happened in this very institution, when uh, we got here in 1999, June, uh, we, the f foreign students, come earlier to understand America and understand the process and everything for one month before our American colleagues came. So when we left, they were told that in the uh, Coastal Guards building there, there is a restaurant, we can go there and eat. So during break, we went there. And we didn't find our way. So the first gentleman we met, we said, sir, where is the restaurant? He said, oh, rest, come, come, come. He took us, you know where he took us? To the rest room. 
because he thought we were asking for restroom while we are looking for restaurant. So you see communication? If you do not communicate properly and your subordinates understand you clearly what you want them to do, you would end up with that. You would take, they, they, you would think they would, you think they have understood you, you think that they will do things when they do it wrong, they start wondering. So as a leader, you must be very effective in your communication with your people. They, you must make sure they understand what you want them to do. And that is why I have always loved this. If there's anything I will never forget in my military life is the mission command. You must tell your subordinates what they are to do. But you must tell them why they are doing it. Why is it important that you want them to do that? I think that is the missing link I found out until I got here and by the time I was leaving it was clear. It's not just enough to pass orders because you are the boss, you, you want to know. Let your subordinates know that he is also very important. That little task you are giving him, if it is done right, this is the big picture that we are going to achieve. But if he does not understand that, then you are in trouble. You will be going to the restroom instead of going to the restaurant. Next. I also found out uh, there was a statement in 1949, and I think there are very few in this room who were born in 19, by 1949. But I can raise my hand, I was one of them. I was born before then. So, but that statement is still very true today. When things fall up, it's the leadership. But the mistake I think we, have, we make sometime in our countries, in our organization, is we look at the boss, the man at the top, the lady at the top. That is the leader. But all of us in our little area are leaders. And if you fail, let me use the military best, because that is where I spend most of my life. If the platoon commander fails, the company commander will definitely fail. And the battalion commander will definitely fail. And the brigade commander will fail. But if the platoon commander knows why he is doing that, and you have built him up and give him the initiative that he can make decisions at those lower levels, then you will find out that he will move on. And you will find out that he will, because he has leadership, all of us have leadership in building us, but what do we do with it? And have you trained your subordinate to say, this is the person I'm grooming. These are the person I have always, when I learned that, in every office I go, I plan at least five people. When I was chief of army staff of Nigeria, I developed six officers. And I said, by God, one of them must replace me. You have to get somebody to replace you. You won't be there forever. And I'm glad that one of them among the six did replace me in that office. The only one I didn't succeed is that when I was chief of defense staff, because I was rushed to go to uh, Darfur, I did not, the, uh, the person I gave number one on the list to succeed me did not, somebody else did. But God knows I tried. So you must build in people who will replace you. You must mentor your subordinates very well so that they can move on. Leadership, I do not succumb that leaders are born. Leaders are made, and you can develop it, as this statement said. We all have leadership in us. We can develop it, it can be taught, and we can train people to be good leaders. Next, communication. I'm happy. Uh, Mr. Koka helped me on uh, this issue, so I don't have to talk much about it. You see what communicate the media can do. He has given us two concrete examples in the world where the media has turned around things. And we, you as a leader, 
and not a politician, that it will, you cannot go to climb the drum and make pronouncement and everything. How can you influence the, lead, the media in a positive way to have effective leadership whereby the people have passion for the development of the society and not for the development of individuals? That is where, that is the question you should ask yourself in your office. This, and you see, one of the challenges I also found out in my service is that if you, what, how difficult your boss or anybody is, if you talk to that person politely, you talk to him where his ego does not matter. If you challenge your boss in the conference, if you challenge him in the public, definitely you get it off sight. But if you go politely and say, sir, ma, how, why don't you look at this in this way? Don't you think it may be better for us? Give him food for thought. But when you want to say, I know more than you, whether you, are, whether you know you have all the knowledge in this world, the decision making is not yours. You can only recommend. And as the word is, if you recommend or suggest, the boss is left to take your suggestion or not, or throw it away. So um, it is very important and uh, crucial that you will communicate well with the people around you. You, um, you make use of the media. And today, we have additional thing called the social media. That is even the worst. And if you know, I know in my country that there are so many, how many, almost, 80 million people now, even in the villages, that have mobile phones. Even my mother, who died last year at the age of 96, had a mobile phone. So you can imagine what it is. So you have to, as a leader, understand where do I fit into this equation? How can I influence my boss, to take the right decision for the organization and for the people. It's not by confrontation. If you confront, nine out of 10 cases, you will be the loser. But if you are polite and diplomatic, and somebody told me that diplomacy is asking somebody to go to hell, and he goes to hell very happy that he's going to hell. <laughs> so if you can do that, then you are on the right track. So how do you communicate? How clear is your communication? How have you built your subordinates to be able to think informally? Because in the world we are in today, there is no second chance. You will not have time to change things. Very difficult. If people have made a mistake because they followed the media and voted the wrong person, they are stuck with that person for the period that the person will be in the office. So the time for second chance is very rare. So how are you developing your subordinates? Not to wait for second chance, that is difficult to get. How are you reacting to the information you have? And how many facts have you done to develop yourself, your argument that you can be accepted very easily when you are speaking to your bosses, when you are speaking at a conference where decision-making is going to be made. Next. Right. Um, I, in my trying to develop myself about leadership, I have always found out that the best are the animals. And those of you in the center here know that each time I come, I talk for one or other animal. Today is the shark. Um, the shark can grow at birth. At birth, I will, I, from my reading, they say the shark is 1.5 meters at birth. That is about five feet when you give birth to it. And in growing, it grows to become up to five, um, up to 50 feet, or about five meters full grown shark, it's about five meters or about 50 feet. But interestingly, studies have shown that if you take a baby shark 
and put it in an aquarium and leave that baby shark in the aquarium up to when it grows up to a, a adult, it will never break the aquarium. It will grow because of the space. If you remove him from the aquarium and take that shark to the sea, it will grow to become the 50 feet or five meters. But if you leave it in the aquarium, it will never grow bigger than the aquarium. What does it tell us? As leaders, your subordinate, your organization will grow as a shark. If you put your organization in the aquarium, if you do not train your subordinate who will take over from you, if you do not expose them, if you do not educate yourself first, and then your subordinates to understand and respect you, then you will find your organization will be like the shark in the aquarium. It will stay there and grow only with the size of the aquarium. And then when you leave, you start wondering what is happening that this organization is not growing. The organization is not growing because you, when you are in the position of leadership, you did not allow the organization to grow. Next. Well, I just uh, want you to quickly go through. We can discuss uh, during discussion, but these are some of the key points I have in mind. You must value people and make sure that when they contribute, you appreciate them. You must share your vision with them. What is your vision? What, how do you want in your exit strategy? If you are going to be in that office for one year, in that one year, what do you want to achieve? And where do they fall into? And what role do you want them to perform? The knowledge and skills of the profession. I have seen whereby some of our security sector leaders, we have spent most of our time talking about politics, blaming game and everything, but we have left our own organization to get rotten. If each one of us will take responsibility, have knowledge, transfer that knowledge, and build the skills of your subordinate. I assure you that we'll have a better place. We blame, we want to talk about others, but ourselves. How much do we develop and know ourselves? You must know yourself. You must know your weaknesses. If you don't, I learn also later part in my life that I always call my subordinates in confidence and say, look at me eyeball to eyeball. Don't deceive me. What do you think I'm doing wrong? When I became chief of army staff, I met the younger people and I told them, the bulk of Nigerian army stops on my table. So if you don't advise me properly and tell me where the challenges are, we will sing together. And that is how we came out with the transformation of Nigerian army in 2004. And I'm glad that that transformation is going on, but I am sad that I failed to get the buy-in of all the people. I did not understand when people were paying lips and eye service and when people were genuine. I take that responsibility because I should have known that better as a leader. I thought all the yes sir I was hearing was really yes sir. <laughs> so, exemplary leadership. You must show good example. You must lead a team, not individual. When your team is successful, say the team is successful. When there is a failure, you as the leader take responsibility. I fail. But when the team succeed, is the team that has made it and make everybody to feel good in the team. But do not make them feel, oh, you are responsible for not getting this right. No, it kills morale, it kills trust, it kills confidence. <coughs> and decision making, you must develop people to know how to make the right decision. Uh, delegation, please, I didn't say abdicating. Because a lot of us leaders, in trying to delegate, we let everything go. There must be a feedback. If you delegate to your subordinate, you must give him a feedback. You have done this wrong. You have to improve here. You have to do this here. That is mentoring. 
That is delegation. That is how the organization can move. Um, and recognition and reward. If people do well, if they deserve a medal, give them the medal. They will be proud when they are wearing the medal. Others will know he is wearing this medal because he has succeeded to do this. You must recognize those who have done well. We can talk more about it during discussion next. You have to empower people, as I've said. You have to delegate your work, don't abdicate, not just give them and then run away. You have to mentor professionally. Everybody among you must be mentored. And you must mentor somebody. If you, I challenge you, when you get back home, if you have not done it, please do it. That you must look at your subordinates and select at least three people in your organization that you will mentor them. If you believe you are a success, mentor them to be better than you professionally. You must, if you don't, you have failed as a leader because you cannot live in that organization forever. When you leave, who takes your place? Um, they, a, a lot of them you can read there. Open door policy, you must have an open door policy for your subordinates to be able to discuss with you in confidence, and you must build them up. Uh, those we can, if there's anything you want us to elaborate, we can during our discussion. Next. How do you overcome these challenges? I put it there, joint training. If the immigration, the police, the military, knowing where you meet together, you have joint training, you find, you, you create scenario, and I'm happy that you are going to have such a thing here. You create scenario on what happened, a role playing, everybody playing his own role, and then at the end, you will see where the things fall. Uh, then you also use this opportunity workshops, seminar, but above all, and I have found it very useful, to use opportunity of this meeting where you have made new friends, where you have, made, uh, you have uh, understood new people. Share experience. In, 19, in 2007, I was Chief of Defense Staff of Nigeria, and that was the first time in Nigerian history that there was going to be an election from a civilian government to another civilian government. And I was in between. And many people said it was not going to happen. To cut a long story short, I met some friends, and one of them was General uh, Watt, who was then the uh, commander of the Africa. We became very good friends. He was a good ally. And in the midst of the challenges I had in 2007, he was somebody I could call, fall back on. I will call him. General, what is your view? This is what is happening in my country. We share ideas. I called uh, Oben, my friend in uh, Ghana. Uh, we discussed with them. What is your view? This is what we share experiences. This is the foundation. You will find it very useful in future. Keep the friends you have. Make sure that you utilize them when the need arises. Um, then I have a recommended book. Well, I have too many recommended books. I don't know whether you'll be able to read all of them. But that is one um, on security sector transformation in Africa. Um, I find it very uh, interesting and rewarding. Um, I, I will conclude by saying that if there is nothing you remember in all I have said, please remember this, that as a leader, you have a responsibility to train your subordinates. You must mentor the future leaders. If you allow it to happen by accident, so also will the running of the office be run in accident. And you know that things that happen in accident will never go forward. Remember that you are dealing in a very sophisticated world where communication, communication is very, very vital. Obrigado.